Uh, there's been an interesting correlation between the stock market and positive media coverage in this race for a vaccine. Earlier in the week, if you remember, there were a couple of stumbles in the market that matched stumbles for some of these key vaccine players. But everyone believes a vaccine will happen. The question, of course, is when and how it will impact the markets. I want to bring in the CIO of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. All right, David, your thoughts on, on this uh, this vaccine? Everyone kind of thinks it's going to happen, that it's inevitable, and yet the market sometimes gets really uh, emotional about any kind of any kind of typical slowdown or speed bump. Well, I think we have to put it in context, Charles. You're right that the market on a macro level is expecting a vaccine to come, and that's because the market is made up of some very smart people that know a vaccine is going to come. And the exact details as to when and which player and which approvals happen and what sequence is pretty immaterial. I think we have to take it in context. When you talk about the market's gyrations earlier in the week, it was 100 points or so. We're up well more than that today. Net, net, through little bumps and bruises along the way, the market's taken it all in perfect stride. The idea that one person in a pause situation with the J&J case is a problem with a 60,000-person clinical trial is absurd. I talked to several healthcare executives this week that said that that is completely common. You normally have dozens of various situations that could be idiosyncratic. They're going to get a vaccine. And here's the other thing I'll say for our listeners. They're going to get more than one. They're going to have options. You're going to have market right. forces competing for different vaccinations around the coronavirus. All right. Well, that's great stuff. Hey, I want to talk to you about the uh, stimulus because I know economic purists hate it, right? Uh, and, and taxpayers, many of them do loathe the idea, loathe the idea of uh, their tax money paying off the debt of irresponsible state governments. But it's pretty clear also that the market really wants this pretty badly. And here's why, folks. According to Evercore, uh, $2 trillion, let's say a $2 trillion package would add 420 basis points to the 2021 GDP and $8 to S&P 500 earnings. So, David, your thoughts on the stimulus? Well, uh, kudos to the good Keynesian folks at Evercore for figuring that out. I, I assume they're not the same folks that measured what the Obama stimulus was going to add to GDP. Well, Charles, I'm not a purist. I'm just <laughs> being very basic about this. The market is up 3,000 points since it became clear that the expected July stimulus was not going to happen. And here we are now, almost you know, two weeks from the election, and we're not uh, about to get an imminent deal. We may end up getting something, and we're going to get something, whether it's lame duck or later on. Um, I certainly believe there needs to be some targeted support to things. I'd be totally supportive of an intelligent, thoughtful bill. But we can't operate, Charles, as if this money that you say that Evercore says is adding to GDP comes out of thin air. The only way they can spend money on stimulus is by taking it from the private sector, either through taxes or debt. That's right. it. The right. government doesn't generate any money. So they're taking away from GDP to add to GDP. I do believe they need to do something targeted, but I do not believe right. the market is sitting around waiting for it. And certainly we should not be bailing out mismanaged states. David, you are absolutely the best. I enjoyed your comments on both of those important topics. My friend, have a great weekend, and I hope to talk to you before the election.